Hello, everyone. It is so good to be with you today, even if it's on a screen. Pastor Matt here. Man, I sure do miss seeing you. Uh, it's been so long for so many of us to be able to gather together and worship on a Sunday. Um, and, and I cannot wait for the day for us to be able to do that face to face. Um, I do want to make sure that you know about something really cool that is going on here within MSM. We're tr always trying to find ways to connect ourselves together. And I'm really looking forward to this uh, coming Friday, uh, July 24th, we have an MSM movie night. Uh, it's going to be right after the night of worship here at the church. And we're going to meet out on the uh, Church West patio, kind of near the kids' entrance. And we're going to watch a movie, have popcorn. Uh, we'll be socially distanced. We'll have masks on. Uh, but I want to invite you to be part of this MSM activity that we're going to have. And we cannot wait to see you. Now, one thing that you do need to do is you do need to register ahead of time. Go to msmsummer.com and secure your spot now so that way you don't miss out. Uh, we do have a limited number of space, so I don't, uh, don't want you to want to go and not be able to go because you don't get that. So have your mom or dad go to msmsummer.com and sign you up. It's totally free, uh, but that just secures your spot. You're going to bring your own chair, uh, bring your mask, and we're going to bring the fun. And so I cannot wait to see you uh, on the 24th. Well, with that, guys, we are in the middle of our Fruit Box series, and it's been an awesome time for us during the summer to be able to go through the fruit of the Spirit, and really, what does that mean for us as followers of Christ? What does it mean to have these fruit in our lives? And so let's continue on in the series here, and so let's go ahead and read Galatians 5, 22 uh, through 23. All right, hopefully you have your Bibles. If not, hit pause, but we're going to keep going. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there are no law. And so if you've been following with us every week, uh, you'll know probably where we're at. If you haven't been or you've missed one, I'd encourage you to go back and, and watch the other messages in the series. But today's fruit of the Spirit is going to be faithfulness. It's going to be faithfulness. And uh, what does faithfulness mean, right? What, what does that mean? Um, you know, it's, it might be something that we're not quite clear on, on the definition. So let me give us the definition. Here's what it says. It says, steadfast, dedicated, dependable, and worthy of trust. So those are kind of some definition words to help us understand what the word faithfulness means. So how does that relate to God? If, if God, and we've looked at all of these that that all of these fruit of the Spirit are, are God's characteristics. Uh, how does this relate to God? So let's go ahead and, and open up our Bibles to Numbers. That's in the Old Testament, uh, 2319. Again, hit pause if you need to, but we're going to keep going. Here's what it says. It says, God isn't a mere human. He can't lie. And if you have your Bibles, I would underline, he can't lie, all right? He isn't a human being. He doesn't change his mind. He speaks and then he acts. He makes a promise and then he keeps it. Wow, what an amazing section of truth, right? That we read there in the book of Numbers about God and his characteristics, specifically the one of faithfulness. How amazing is it that God cannot lie? that he can't break his promises and the things that he says that he's going to do. He actually does them. How many of you have ever promised your mom, and, okay, I'm going to clean my room and you don't, right? Or I'm going to take out the trash or you don't, right? Uh, that, that, that happens, right, with us, with, with humans. But, and it's hard for us to understand and, and grasp this, this truth because we live in a world where people abuse 
our trust and they mislead us. They, they flat out lie to us. They tell us things that we th they think they want us to hear. And, and people are not typically the definition of faithfulness, right? People let us down. People, people don't do what they, what they say they, get, they are going to do at times. But God is the perfect representation of faithfulness because it is his character. It's like saying, <clears throat> excuse me, that it's in his DNA. Like it is exactly who he is. And the moment that God you know, wasn't faithful would be the moment that he wasn't God. And that's, that's impossible because he cannot stop being God. And there's nothing that's going to change that. So he is always going to be faithful. He never can lie. He is always going to keep his promises. Wow. And, and if that's true, and it is true, so since that's true, we can know and we can believe that God is faithful. God is absolutely faithful. And because God can't lie, we know that the Bible is full of truth. And we read throughout all of, of the Bible, and, and just like even in the Old Testament, for example, there's so many elements and examples of God's faithfulness. We see how God continually walks with, with the, the Jewish people all throughout the Old Testament. The promises that he made to, to people like Abraham and Moses and Noah and David and how he spoke through the prophets and kept his promises and literally dozens and dozens of examples of God's faithfulness to his people. And we could spend months looking at all of those. And, and I would encourage you to, to go and read some of those if you, you want to you know, read the, the accounts of all of those. We don't have time to do that today. But I want to just draw our attention to, to one verse here in the book of Psalm. Psalm 33, 4 says this, What the Lord says is right and true. He is faithful in everything he does. He's faithful in everything that he does. The Bible is proof of that. We see that throughout scripture, that he is faithful. The most life-changing example, you know, that we read in the Old Testament are prophecies promising a coming Messiah, the Savior of the world. God's faithful promises were fulfilled in the, in the New Testament through the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. The gospel is the faithful expression, the way that God shows, right, the, of, the, of the love that God has for us, who sent Jesus to earth to live a perfect life and die unjustly on the cross as payment for my sin, for your sin, so that we could be forgiven of those sins and restored into relationship with God through a risen Jesus who conquered sin and death and is now in heaven preparing an eternal place for those of us that would put our faith and trust in him. Man, what an amazing example of faithfulness that God has demonstrated through Jesus. I love what 1 John 1, 9 says. It's, it's one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Let's take a look at it. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful. There's that word. And just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How amazing is it that he is faithful to forgive us of all the things that we have done against God in our selfishness and in our pride, in our humanness, that those things that have separated from us from God, he was still and is faithful to forgive us of those when we come to him humbly asking for forgiveness. What an amazing faithful God that we read about and that we experience through even just this, the forgiveness of our sins. And if we can trust him for the forgiveness of our sins, if we can trust him through Jesus to restore us to, to him, that, that we can trust that we have eternal life through him because of his faithfulness, because he said that. And I can put my trust in God because he's faithful. 
Because of all those reasons, I can literally put my trust in him because he is faithful. It's not because he's kind of faithful or partly faithful. But since God saves me, I can put my trust in him. I'm giving him the very thing that means the most to me, myself. And I can trust him in that. But I know for all of us, for, for me included, saying that we trust God is easier said than doing, isn't it? I think we have a hard time trusting God. And there's going to be these moments that, that put that into test for us, right? How, how can anyone, you know, have that certainty that God is going to come through and be faithful in times that we really need him? Because there's times in our life where we feel like we're alone. We feel like we, we can't make it. We feel like, like we're at the end of our rope. And we wonder, where is God? Where, where, where do I see him? God, aren't you supposed to be faithful? And I just continually go back to scripture and I think of one of my favorite apostles, and that's Peter. In Matthew 14, we read an, an account where Peter, right, steps out of the boat to walk towards Jesus. You've probably heard it and read it many times. And this act is an act of faith and trust in Jesus, right? Because let's be honest, most of us uh, have a really hard time walking on water. I don't know about you, but I have never been able to do it. And you probably haven't either. And so we think, how did he know it was going to work? How did he know he was going to be able to do that? How did he know he was going to be able to walk on water? And I'm guessing that in his mind, he didn't know that he was going to be able to do it. Right? I mean, up here, like, I, I don't think I can walk on water. But he knew Jesus. He knew who Jesus was. He knew what he had seen Jesus do. And he knew that he wanted to be with Jesus. For Peter and, and, and for me and for us, the key to trusting God is knowing him and his son Jesus. He steps out of the boat because he had faith in Christ to help him get to where he needed to be, which is really by Jesus' side. And the same is true for you and for me. He had seen Jesus' faithfulness to do what he said he was going to do numerous times. Heal the sick, raise the dead, amazing, like mind-blowing things. He had seen that. The same things that we read about in, in the New Testament. And for all of us, I think this is a big part of the answer. Our faith in God is entirely dependent upon our relationship with God, which comes through closeness and time with him. If you're wrestling and, and trusting God, I want to encourage you to spend time in the Bible and in prayer with him. Even if it's just a small mark to start, that you would start building that that habit inside of you that you want to get to know him more and more. Now, we have a companion Bible study for each of these messages. I, I would encourage you to email us if you don't have it already, and, and we'll get it to you. Uh, that, that we would go to him in prayer and talk to him. It doesn't have to be some grand speech. Just, just talk to him. Our trust in God's faithfulness is really lived out in the relationship that we have with him. And so our next point that I want to draw our attention to is that a faithful life lives God's way. To live a faithful life and to grow this fruit in our lives, just like all the others that we've talked about, it's no surprise that what influences goes, you know, the influence that go in us, they come out. Look at what Romans 12, 2 says. It says, do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Every day, we have to deal with the world's way versus God's way. And as we can see, they are not the same. In fact, the world's way led by Satan is completely at war with God and those who would, who would call on Jesus' name. 
those that would have relationship with him. And it doesn't take long for us to see that our world is a complete mess. And at the root of that mess is the denial of God and really his faithfulness that we see through scripture and the rejection of Jesus and the, the gospel. And it's rooted in man's selfishness and pride. Paul says that we have to be transformed, that how we have thought and acted before cannot continue if we are going to be faithful followers of Jesus. Because even after we accept Jesus, we're not perfect. The battle continues for our allegiance to Christ every day. I don't know about you, but I am bombarded all the time with temptation and things that would draw me away from Christ. We have old habits and sinful desires that are opposition to faithfulness in God. So each day, me and you, we have to dedicate ourselves to not being conformed, not being shaped and changed to the values and desires that the world says are good, the, the, the world says are important and that they value. Instead, allowing God and his word to change us that we would be transformed by what we think so that way what we think travels to our heart and our heart in combination with our head the things that we do and say respond accordingly and i think that that we all though have a hard time with this it it is a battle isn't it look what james says here in verse 122, it says, don't just listen to the word. You fool yourselves if you do that. You must do what it says. Now, I've, I am, I'm saying that this has definitely have been me. How many of you have read the Bible or you've heard a message, maybe even like today, and you agree with it? You say, yeah, I totally think that that's true. I believe that. Yeah, I, I, I want to stop doing that or I want to start doing this because the Bible says so. Because I, I hear it being taught. My life group leader is sharing that with me. My parents are sharing with me. I see it in the Bible. I know that what, it's what it says. And then you go out and do exactly the opposite. James is saying to us, hey, you aren't being faithful to God if all you do is read or listen. You actually have to do it. Like your life actually has to respond in faithful obedience to God. It's not just good enough to hear it. A number of years ago, one of our camp speakers said something that has always stuck with me. You might have heard me say it before. But he said this about the Bible. He said, we can't just read the Bible to finish. We need to read the Bible to change. Again, there's that battle. It's not about just saying, oh, I read my Bible. It's about what is God saying to you so that way you can, in response, be faithful to God. He has been faithful to give you his word and directions for life. How can you be faithful in responding to that truth that he provides for you and for me? How can we then live that out? So when you hear a message or you read the Bible, and we have that battle, right, of our sinful desires and the, the pressure that's thrown in at us, right? We, we need to respond with, here's what the Bible says. Because that battle, right, leads to temptation in our lives, which is directly opposite to what God desires for us. However, God is so good. He is so faithful, even in that, even in those moments of temptation when we, we maybe heard something and we know it's sin, and yet we are tempted to do it. Here's what Hebrews 11, 6 says. Sorry, here's what 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will always provide the way of escape that you may be able to to endure it. Wow, what an amazing truth that that is. 
See that God is faithful, even when you are tempted to help you be faithful. That the God of the universe, the one who's always been faithful and always will be faithful and is being faithful to you in those moments to to provide you the power to resist the pull of temptation and your sinful desires. Yes, you can absolutely resist temptation. Is it easy? No, and a lot of times it's not. In fact, many times it's extremely difficult because in those moments we're resisting everything that the world says is important and we're putting our faith and trust to action in Jesus. In those moments of temptation, we have to remember his faithfulness to us through Jesus, through the cross, that he saved you from sin and the punishment of sin, that he saved you from an attorney in hell, but has restored you into relationship with him. That during those moments of temptation, you remember God's faithfulness to you. Because he's been so faithful that you want to respond in faithfulness to him in return. The Bible says that he will never leave you, that he will never forsake you, that he loves you, that you are not alone, that he cares for you. And in those ways, he he does that in ways that we can, can never even humanly grasp or understand. To wrap up today's message in a sentence is this. Faithfulness is believing that God is who the Bible says he is and living in that belief daily. Faithfulness is believing that God is who the Bible says he is and living in that belief daily. Faithfulness is not impossible but we absolutely know that we need his help and his power. We need his truth in the word to be able to be faithful to him. I'm so thankful that God has been faithful forever. And he's not going to stop now. So I want to encourage you to trust him with your life and to reflect that trust in ways that show him honor and glory and love because of what he's done for you through Jesus. I pray that all of us can grow in our faithfulness and love of God and demonstrate that both to him and to an unbelieving world who desperately needs to know about Jesus in return. Let's pray. God, I thank you so much for your faithfulness. I thank you for your faithfulness that we see demonstrated through the gospel. And God, in our lives now, you are being faithful to draw us to you, to help us in temptation, to give us victory, and to live a life of obedience to you. So God, I pray that even today that we would be encouraged by your word. God, I pray that we wouldn't just hear what was said today and and what we read but that we would actually do it as well. God, we are so thankful for your faithfulness. Let us live our lives in gratitude of that faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for being with us today. I really enjoyed sharing this. Hopefully we'll see you guys back here next week. Have a good day. Bye.